Welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue, and I'm out here in the backyard by myself today. Just wanted to give you guys a bonus episode about the changes that have come since the last time we uploaded. And normally we have our set pattern of the videos that we do with Monday Night Football this week and not having our normal game plan. We won't put that up until Sunday night, the day night before the game. I wanted to give you guys this little bit of a reaction. And it's more about the state of the Chiefs than just the fact that they signed Le'Veon Bell. But, hey, we might as well talk about Le'Veon Bell because I know he's on everybody's mind. And so if you saw my precursor when it was still just a rumor, go back and check that out and you can have a look. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like and sub and hit the bell notification and all those things. But today we're just we're just out here on a, on a windy but uh, Sunday or Saturday morning waiting to see what college football is going to bring us today. And quite frankly, uh, I'm just kind of reflecting on what's going on with the Chiefs, uh, and Bell's part of it. And I, I saw a lot of back and forth about what the impact is going to be for Clyde with Le'Veon. And Le'Veon is a guy that can run in the zone, he can catch out of the backfield, he can do all the things that Clyde does. And so there's a nice congruity there that they do the same things, they have the same strengths, they can put out things on the field that are almost interchangeable. The difference being is that you have the length and the size and the weight behind Levy versus what you see from Clyde. Now, I don't think that Clyde's had that bad of a run. I know there's people that will show you screen caps of wide open holes that he doesn't quite get through, but everything is moving. Taking a, a still of 22 film can create some illusions. So let's not get too down on Clyde Edwards Lair because Clyde is the back of the future and I think he's done admirably with what he's had to work with there are holes that are created by this offensive line but they close down pretty quickly and I think that's been the one thing that's really bothered Clyde in making sure as the wind comes up and destroys my thought there sorry folks as Clyde is trying to battle through the adaptation of getting into the NFL that's also an adaptation and I think he's done pretty admirably but I can understand why some folks want, want to see a little bit of a spark. And I think having somebody else that is used to creating on his own, who can run in the zone like Le'Veon, and has the girth, the experience to do a little bit more. I hate to see Daryl Williams get demoted, but that's clearly something that they feel they needed more out of the number two. I like what Daryl does. I still like what Daryl does. I just haven't seen the progression this season after the injury that we saw last season. And maybe that's what the team is thinking as well. So you can't really blame them for going out and spending what ended up, and the reason that I'm doing this video is because now we know the contract details, is that it's a million dollar contract as a base salary. Uh, very, very inexpensive. And then he has some incentives that can take it up to two. That's not a whole lot. We expect him, I expect him to continue to be the backup running back. I don't think this is a situation where Clyde goes to the bench or anything like that. I think, honestly, it's about getting more spark out of your number two snaps than it is replacing the number one. I don't think Clyde's going anywhere or getting demoted in any way. I actually would like to see continued snap displacement in terms of touches uh, in the 60-40 range. That would be my goal for the, the rookie to continue to get the bulk of the carries or touches in general, um, but not overly so. Um, so 60-40, I think, is a great split. It lets Le'Veon come in and adapt. Now, learning the system, the terminology, that might be a bit of a challenge, but running in the zone is not going to be because this is what Le'Veon Bell does. The cool part is that he has shown a propensity in the past to be able to do the things that the Chiefs want to do in splitting out the running backs, in getting those matchups that they can take advantage of. And so I think that that helps both of them, to tell you the truth. I see it less about adding to them on the field together and more about being interchangeable in what happens in terms of the play call depending on which back is in there i i see this as um, a smoothing of what has to happen when each are on the field because i think you can do most of the same things the key difference for me is that the state of the offensive line i don't think is going to change we still haven't seen kolechi assembly go on ir yet i do expect that uh, they have been very cagey with the whole thing. And maybe that's just an announcement. Maybe that's just timing it for uh, the football game on Monday night. I'm not sure. But we're, we'll find out here relatively quickly. 
But the bottom line is I think Mike Remmer slides into that spot as he did last week, and I think that's going to stay that way. I don't see free agents out there that you can really point to and say, hey, they got to go get these guys. Um, I don't think that you can upgrade it right now as it stands just super free and easy. That said, I do want to see them get better in short yardage. Uh, and that has to be, I, I don't know, at Remmer's age, I don't know that you can do that. Uh, but you have to see a buckling down. You have to see more of a just physicality out of the offensive line, particularly the interior three. I, I, Wiley is generally a pretty strong guy. Uh, he got beat up a little bit in the past game last week, uh, and that's one thing. So let, let's take it back to simpler thing. Let's let's cram it down their throats in short yardage. Le'Veon Bell can do more of that in terms of attacking the pile, knowing where to go, knowing where to cut, just by dealing with the speed of the NFL defenses because of his experience. And so I do expect that you're going to see him on short yardage more, and they're going to try to get a spark out of that so that they can be more productive when they don't have that far to go. I think that's a good plan. And I, I like the addition of bringing that back into the offense. That's a plus in my book. Uh, not to the detriment of the rest of the offense, though. Don't think that because Le'Veon Bell is on this roster now that they're all of a sudden going to run at a 50-50 at clip versus the pass. No, they're not. But this is the thing. With the defense that we've been seeing, the mixed coverages, the deep coverages, you know, when they're playing quarters on half and, and mixing everything up man versus zone, uh, we have not seen as much pure cover four as I had expected, but we've seen a lot of half coverages where you have two covering one half of the deep zone, one on the other, so you're not committing four guys to the deepest. But it mixes things up. By having backs that you can run out of the backfield, can catch out of the backfield, it forces the defense to come up some. And I think that that's all theoretical at this point, so you're going to see them emphasize the short pass game to the backs early against the Bills is my thought. Uh, we'll talk more about that when Dan and I do the pregame video tomorrow. And that's probably just going to be a live stream at this point. So um, I'll set this one up for uh, the premiere so that you guys can chat along and that kind of thing. Remember, Super Chats always help us out, so you can always hit those. Um, but we'll talk in depth about the game plan tomorrow, as will Chris and I on the Locked on Chiefs podcast. That'll be out Sunday night as well. But in emphasizing the short pass game, that's going to draw some things up, especially if you get the matchups that you're looking for. Now, Edmonds is a good linebacker. They have some others that I think can turn and run. It's going to be interesting to see how they choose to deploy against not just Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but against Le'Veon when he does come in the game. The whole concept of split backs has been a topic of great conversation. I love seeing it because I think it isolates what the defense has to do because whether you run a linebacker, whether you run the nickel, split backs against nickel is really interesting. And I think it can maybe thwart the tendency of the league right now. I don't know so much so against the Bills, but in general. So come out, emphasize not only the run uh, for the short yardage, but also the short pass game and get some things going there. You do that. And all of a sudden, they're going to have to change. They're going to have to go to more of a traditional too high things that the Chiefs and the wide receivers can attack more readily without having to decipher like we see early in games and then figuring it out. So that's what I'm looking for. But it all comes back to this team got their, their spanking last week. They got to figure it out. It seems like they're very prideful, and I think there's a lot to it. Uh, we even heard some things. If I could put a clip up probably on Instagram and Twitter – uh, of Tyron Matthew making making a mistake, making a play that cost them. And he even admitted that. I'll have to find that audio too, but that's a significant deal. So I think that the recovery from that is going to be key. I think it is going to be something that they're fired up about, and that's a good sign for them going forward as well. At the end of the day, this is one of the better matchups in the AFC. It's not the Ravens, don't get me wrong, but this is a team that should be in the hunt clearly for their division, but for pushing the Chiefs in that that area of who could get that by. Uh, I think they're going to do pretty well. I'm, I'm expecting a really good game out of this one. We'll talk more about the specifics tomorrow, but I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Check this one out. Uh, leave your comments below. Mark what you think about Le'Veon and the usage and what you're looking for as well as the offensive line. So have a good one. I'll talk to you later.
Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.